All right. All right, so we're going to carry on today with chapter eight. And in fact, we're going to do some examples here uh, because I think we could use some practice. This is a fairly complicated topic, so we want to get as much practice as we can. Um, let's jump ahead to where we left off. All right, so this is the formula that we spent so much time with uh, last week, uh, or last time rather. Um, this is our future value formula when we have complex in, uh, compound interest. So let's just remind ourselves what these terms represent. Uh, A is the future value. This is what we're trying to calculate. P is the principal amount that we've invested or saved in, in, if we're looking at a bank account. Um, R is the rate of interest, which is an annual percentage. N is the compounding frequency, which means how many times per year uh, interest is credited to our account. And then finally, T is the time until the deposit will mature, and that is measured in years. Okay, so as far as the N is concerned, we've got several possibilities here. Actually, let me update this a little bit. Uh, quarterly, we've got one more possibility in here, quarterly. N equals four. All right, so those are the ones you're most likely to run into in practice. You're not likely to see anything bizarre like uh, every three weeks or something like that. Usually compounding frequency is either annually, semi-annually, which is twice a year, N equals two there, uh, quarterly N equals four, uh, monthly is 12, and then daily is 365. Now annually, let's add that as well. n equals one. So in that formula, um, what you're going to see is that the value of n depends on how frequently the interest is paid to our account. All right, now, we've, of course, we've done several examples of this, but I would like to go back and revisit these and so that we can uh, practice with a few more new examples just to make sure that we're um, comfortable with this formula before we do anything else. All right, so for example, here we have an investor deposits $1,000 into a one-year CD that pays an annual rate of interest of 4%. So you can see up here, P is 1,000, T is one, the rate is 4%. And we'd like to know how much will the investor have in their account at the end of the year if interest is compounded annually, semi-annually, monthly, and daily. So what we need to do is grab that formula and see what we can do with these calculations. So first, let me go copy this down here. And so again, since it's been a few days since we did this, why don't we do this? There we go. This is the formula that you want. So what I'm gonna do is uh, summarize all of this onto this one uh, slide. All right, here we go. So once again, given that P equals 1,000, R equals 0.04, T equals one, in part A, N equals one, in part B, N equals two, in part B, N equals four, Uh, actually, no, part part C and, oh yeah, that's right. One, two, 12. And then finally the challenging one, D, is daily. So here's your challenge for the day or that your first challenge for the day. Why don't you take out your calculator and take this formula using these numbers and these different assumptions about compounding frequencies, figure out the value of A based on this formula. All right, now, um, like I said, this is a tricky formula. The more practice we get, the better off we'll be. And of course, on the next test, this is exactly what you'll be running into. So um, let's just start with A. Um, why don't you try that and see what you get, and then we'll see what happens. And then this way, by the time we're done with all four of them, you should be uh, familiar again with how this formula works. And then we'll try a new set of examples. And once we get to the point where we're very comfortable with the formula, we can go on to something a little different. 
All right, so right now, at this second, why don't you take out your calculator and try part A. What is the future value when n equals one, given this information up here? All right, so I'll give you a minute, and then let's see how you did. All right, so this first one was the easiest one. Oh, did somebody have it? No. All right, the first one is definitely the easiest one. Uh, let's see, let's jump in here and uh, do it right now. So once again, remember P is a thousand, R is 0.04, T is one, and in this case, N equals one as well. So A equals P times one plus R over N to the NT power. So you plug everything in. This one is really easy because there's so many ones involved. So number one strategy, simplify everything. Before throwing it into your calculator, if you try to throw this into your calculator the way it's written, you'll need a lot of parentheses and it's going to be much, much harder to get your answer. So just take a look and see if there's any ways you can simplify it. So here, for example, we have the following. Now, when you raise something to the first, it's the same, you don't really need that exponent there. It's just 1,040. We can write in the fact that there's no sense right here. So this is your final result. You put $1,000 in your account. Uh, you, you're paid 4% once at the end of the year. When the year's over, you have $1,040. Very good. All right, now, that one was very simple because N is equal to one, but why don't you try that again when N equals two and see what you come up with. Okay, now the one thing we do want to notice before we go any further is that as N keeps increasing, the compound interest as we saw last time goes up as well, which means that the future value has to be a little bit higher. So in other words, here we already noted that this is 1,040. So whatever number you get, it has to be somewhat higher than 1,040. It may not be a lot, but it will be more than 1,040. In fact, if you go through the steps, uh, you'll see 
that uh, the only change we made is n equals two. So this time, when n equals two, a equals p times one plus r over n to the nt power equals 1000 times one plus 0.04. Now this time we're dividing by two and in the exponent we have two times one. So you've got 1000 times 1 1.02 raised to the second power. Now, if you take out your calculator and multiply or square that 1.02, what you've actually got here is 1000 multiplied by 1.0404 to end up with $1,040.40. So just as we predicted, there's an extra 40 cents involved, which we didn't get before. And that's because we suddenly find ourselves earning what we call compound interest. Okay, that's the key right there. The 40 cents that's coming about not because the interest rate was changed or the time frame, but because of the compounding frequency. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you left this money in the bank for 20 years, um, it would make a, a huge amount of difference. Okay. All right. So once you try the third one, which is monthly, and again, just keep in mind that whatever end you end up with, it has to be more than 1040.40. All right, let's see how we did. All right, so once again, the numbers that we have up here, the pr uh, principal is a thousand. The rate of interest is 4%. It's a one-year investment. In part C, N equals 12. Okay, so here's what we have. Okay, so we can think of this as 1000 times 1.0 now, when you divide four by percent by 12, you're going to get a number that may need to be rounded slightly. Um, let's do this. Let's use six digits. That should preserve the accuracy because remember, this has to be rounded to dollars and cents anyway. So what you've got here is 1,040.74.
Okay, so again, once the uh, compounding frequency has been increased, the total future value will go up, but that's not because of the simple interest or the principal. It's all due to the higher compound interest. Okay, now there's one more. This is daily. We haven't actually done these one of these before. This one, you have to be extra careful. Um, you probably want to use more digits of accuracy than usual. In fact, uh, yeah, look at that. That's a tiny number. <clears throat> you probably should keep at least eight digits of accuracy when you do this one to avoid any rounding problems. All right, so but if you can handle this one, you're in pretty good shape. So let's try this one. Here we go. Somebody's got the right the answer, I hope. 10, 40, 80. Let's see. All right. Well, let's find out. It sounds about right. Let's just confirm that. Okay. So for this part, again, we have the same constants. 10, 40, 81. Okay. The differences are probably because of rounding, but let's find out. Um, P equals 1,000, R equals 0.04, T equals one, and in this case, part D, N equals uh, 365, and A equals P, one plus R over N, N T, one plus 0.04, divided by 365, and then the exponent is 365 times one. So you have a thousand times now. Yeah, this number is pretty scary looking. Uh, 0.04 over 365 is approximately point, oh, oops. O O O. One O. The calculator that I have here it shows one O nine. Five eighty nine. Yeah, that that's uh, that's a big number. I mean, that's a big exponent. It's a tiny number. So if you do it with that many di uh, digits, yeah, you actually have one thousand forty. In, in this case, I've got 0 0.808, which you the bank would round up to, one, because it's dollars and cents, you can round this to 81. If you wrote 80 on the test, uh, that's fine. Um, because of course, we're, with such uh, small numbers like this and large exponents, you're gonna get some rounding differences. So let's round this up to 10, 40, 81. And then what I'm gonna do is show you how to avoid rounding problems. If you're willing to put up with a little extra complexity, you can actually avoid rounding errors altogether, uh, but it does require some extra steps. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Uh, what you're doing here is this, on your calculator, suppose that you decide that you don't want any rounding at all.
Okay, we don't need the one here. It's 365. So this is the part. What you can actually do is, is something like this. If you go from left to right, you can multiply by and then open parentheses twice. Yes, it's getting a little complicated. 0.04, open again. Divided by 365. Uh, close. Exponent. 365. Equals. Close again. Equals. So I'm going to double check that on my calculator just to make sure that it's doing what I think it's doing. But the key here is that I've replaced that long string from before. Uh, remember, it was 0 0.00, 0 .009 589. I've replaced it with this ratio, which actually is the exact value. Now, in a case like this, you may not even notice the difference. But it's good to know that you can do this if you need to. But look what a mess it is. All right, let me just quickly confirm this. Oh, all right. I, my mistake. All right. I just realized at the end here, there's a problem. You would have, it's, yeah, I've got an extra equals in there. All right. So I'm going to try that again one more time. I just want to make sure that this is working correctly. 1,000. Now, I'm, just, I'm not saying you must do it this way. You can feel free to round. Well, you just have to be careful not to overdo it. <coughs> like with such a small number, make sure you keep a large number of decimals. Okay, hold on one second. Oh man. It, it's really not happy with me right now. <clears throat> All right, let me try it again. I know what the problem is. There's an extra, All right, hold on. I think one of these is not necessary. All right, let's try it this way. And then we'll make sure that we've got it, 1,000. So I'm used to a different calculator, which doesn't work exactly this way. Oh, I know what the problem is. All right, let's try that. 1,000, let's try that again, times, open parentheses. One plus, open parentheses, 0.04 divided by 365, close equals exponent, 365, close. No, it doesn't like that either. All right, so maybe, oh man. Uh, I want to try one more thing.
All right, let's try. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, all right, let's try it this way. Hold on one second. It's still giving me a hard time. No, I don't know. I, it's just, it's not working the way. All right, let's not do it this way. This is the much messier approach anyways. Let's, let's go from left to right. This is so ridiculous. It's nothing like any calculator I've ever seen before. So let's do it this way. Let's go from right to left. We'll do this so much straight, more straightforward. One plus 0.04 divided by 365, close. All right, let's 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 see what that gives us. One plus, open parentheses, 0.04 divided by 365, close equals. Okay, now once you hit the equal sign, this is so much easier. Then whatever you get, exponent is 365, exponent 365 equals and then multiply that by a thousand this is why i always say in these calculators you should do the most complicated part first and then save the easy stuff for last this going from left to right it was going to take a long time to figure out what this thing wants us to do this one worked out beautifully it's it was very straightforward now if you look at it carefully you'll see that the exact value is 1040.80849, let's say. Now, anyway, look at it. This is going to be rounded to 81 cents. All of this extra precision doesn't really help us that much. So um, what you might wanna do is rather than go through all of this, just do what we did earlier and replace this with that um, the decimal equivalent, which was point Oh, oh, oh. And even all these decimals were probably not absolutely necessary. So you could put it in there and it makes things so much simpler. Or you can do it like this, uh, do what's in the box first and then multiply the result by a thousand. So there's a few options here, but I kind of like this approach just because like I said, we don't really need that much accuracy given that all these numbers have to be rounded to dollars and cents. So it's up to you to decide what to do with this case, the daily case. The others, it's not such a big deal because there's not that much rounding. This is the only one that could potentially be a real headache. All right, now let's try a different one. Just because like I said, we always could use some more practice. So why don't we try this case? All right, this will be our next example. And we're gonna change the numbers a little. All right, so let's say an investor deposits $1,000 um, in a bank, it pays a rate of interest of 6% for five years, okay? Compute the future value based on the assumption that, that interest is compounded I will kind of run through the same ones. This time, let's just do annually, semi-annually. Um, uh, quarterly, and then monthly. Okay, so let's do that. Now this time, um, obviously the ends mean the same thing they did before. 
Uh, for example, annually means that n equals one. As n here, n equals two, n equals three, a uh, four rather, and then finally here, n equals 12. So we'll, we'll avoid the, the a nightmare of the daily one. All right, so let's do this now. This one's a little, well, the number should be a little bigger because you're keeping the money there for five years rather than um, one year. And also the interest rate is a little bit higher. So your number should be a bit bigger. So let's just start with the first one, see what you get. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how everybody did. And, but, and again, after a few of these, you'll start to get really comfortable with this formula. It's a bit messy. But once we get enough practice, we should be fine. All right, here we go. Well, um, why don't you tell us what it is? 13, that looks good. All right, let's see why. All right, so once again, we'll write out all the details. So this time, P is 1,000. Um, R is 6%, T is 5, and in part A, N is 1. I have to be careful here with my handwriting because the R's and the T uh, N's are starting to run into each other. That's better. Okay, 1,000. 1 plus 0 0.06 over 1. The exponent is 5 times 1. So this reduces very nicely to 1,000 times 1 1.06 to the fifth power. And so based on what we did the other day, what you could do is if you want on your calculator, just do 1.06 raised to the fifth power and then multiply the result by 1,000 and that should give you the right answer, uh, which happens to be 1338, rounded to dollars and cents, 1338. Point 20, let's say 23. It's close, it's, it's like 22.5 something. 
So the bank would round that to 1338.23. Very good. All right, I'm going to confirm those keystrokes on this thing. 1.06 exponent 5 equals times 1,000 equals. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Uh, as far as the Apple calculator goes, <clears throat> going doing this first and then multiplying the result by 1,000 is probably the best thing you should do. All right. Well, you know what that means? It's time to try semi-annually. Oh, and I'm going to write these answers in here so we can see them all together in one place. And then, of course, you should expect that the next one will have a, a higher value because of semi-annual compounding. All right, so this time do everything the same except that n equals two. All right, here we go. 1343.92, perfect. All right, so let's see why. All right, so what happens here is you've now got, once again, P is 1,000. R is 0.06. And T equals 5. And in part B, N equals 2. A thousand times one plus 0 0.06 over two this time. So this time you've actually got a thousand times 1.03 raised to the 10th power. So on the um, iPhone, one way you can figure this out is to put 1.06 to the 10th power equals times a thousand equals and that should give you one thousand three forty three point ninety two after rounding it of course to dollars and cents it's it's actually nine one six but that's fine we'll round it to um, 92 cents 134392 by the way if you noticed when we did this in our original example, the differences between these um, four cases were quite small because the money was only kept in the bank for one year. Because now the money is being kept in the bank for five years, the differences between these cases will be larger. In other words, the compounding has a bigger effect when the money is kept in the bank for a longer period of time. All right, so just keep an eye on that. So now with quarterly, the next one will be even larger. The question is how much larger? So why don't you go ahead and take a shot at that one.
All right, let's see who's got it. Thirteen forty six eighty six. Perfect. All right. I think we're definitely getting the hang of this. All right, but let's see why this is true. <clears throat> so we've got P equals one thousand. R is point oh six. Just to, for reference, I'll put them back up here again. And here n equals 12. So what do we have? A thousand times one plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12 times five power. So this is actually 1000 times 1 1.005 to the 60th power. Ooh, it's getting pretty big there. So what you can do on your calculator is put 1.005 exponent, 60 equals times 1,000 equals, and you should get 1,346. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I just realized I'm doing the wrong one. Sorry, that's monthly. I'm giving, I'm spoiling the surprise. Ah. Uh, all right, hold on one second. Let me let's save this one for later. All right, um, let me let me jump ahead. I, I just realized I was doing the wrong one. This is D. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll just show it to you. But let me just do um, C right now for quarterly. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. C is C is quarterly. And so you'll have the P is a thousand, uh, R six percent, and T is five years, of course. All right, so this one is a thousand times one plus six percent is divided by four. The exponent is four times five. So this one is a thousand times. 1.015 to the 20th power. That's the one we want. All right, so for the cap calculator, you can do this. 1.015 exponent 20 <clears throat> equals times 1,000 equals. And yes, this will equal 1,346.86 with a little rounding, of course. All right, so let's add that to our chart, 1346.86. Well, actually, let me give you a minute to copy this down and I'll add it to the chart.
<clears throat> and of course, as you can see, it did go up again. 13, <clears throat> 1346.86. Now for the 12, I accidentally started to do this one, but I did not quite show, you see what I did was I got this to this point, but I didn't actually write down the answer. So you can still go ahead and see what you get when you follow these steps. So this is what you would be doing with quarterly. So let's just see what you come up with with this one. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Thirteen forty-eight eighty-five exactly. All right. So when you plug in those numbers, you should get thirteen forty-eight point eighty-five. All right. So did everybody get that? I hope. Nice. All right. So we're getting pretty good at this. I can tell. So let's add this to our list. And you can see that once again, it went up 1348.85. And as we would expect, as we keep increasing and we're going to get more money in our account. Well, now I've got another example in mind where we're not going to change the compounding frequency. We're going to change the interest rate. All right, so let's try that. Just to see how much of a difference it makes. So what I'd like to do here is, let's say that we'll keep it simple. Um, we're gonna deposit $1,000 in the bank. And this time we're gonna make an assumption. All right, so I'm recycling this slide here um, that we start with a thousand and uh, let's say that the compounding frequency for this bank All right, hold on. The slides are being stubborn with me. There we go. All right, so we deposit $1,000 in a bank that compounds interest. Oh, uh, the number of years, let's, let's say uh, five years is fine, uh, but this time we deposit $1,000 in a bank for five years. 
interest is compounded quarterly. Compute the future value of the sum based on the assumption that the rate of interest Okay, so this time we'll have two diff four different rates of interest. Okay, so instead of changing the compounding frequency, let's change the rate of interest. Ooh, that should be fun. Now, clearly, as you could probably guess, each time we, I raise the rate of interest, the value that I end up with should go up. All right, the question is how much? All right, so let's start with that one and we'll see what we get. Oh my God, somebody has it already. That was fast. 110490, yes it is, as a matter of fact. Let's find out why. All right, so what do we know? This time, um, he is a thousand. Uh, this time, N is four, T is five, and in part A, R is the one that's changing. It's 2%. Now, the formula never changes. A thousand, one plus, so it's 2% over four. So in all four of these cases, the exponent will always be 20 quarters. Okay, so the only thing that's changing is the interest rate. So a thousand and 0.02 over four is uh, plus one is 0.005. Uh, no, wait, no, it's not, sorry, hold on. It's 05, no, no, I had the first time, it's 005, yes. Okay, raised to the 20th power. So on the calculator, you would do it as 1.005, 1.005 exponent 20 equals times 1,000 equals. And if you go through all those steps, you should have 1,000. One hundred and four dollars and ninety cents. All right, so we start with one thousand one hundred four ninety. So this time, in Part B, rather than changing the compounding frequency, we're going to change the interest rate from two percent to four percent. Now, clearly, that should raise the amount that we have in our bank account. The question is, how much? All right, so let's give that a shot. Okay.
Okay, we have uh, somebody knows. All right, let's see what we got. 122019. Yes, that's it. Exactly. All right, so let's see why. Okay. Um, So again, we start in each of these four cases with P is a thousand, N is four, T is five, but now R is four percent, and A equals P times one plus R over N to the NT power, a thousand. So this time we have four percent that's divided by four. The exponent in all four cases will be 20. And so in the calculator, you could do it as 1.01 exponent, 20 equals times 1,000 equals. And when you're done, you should get 122019. All right. Man, I, like I said, uh, after a few times, uh, it starts to become almost second nature. It's just, it does take some getting used to. It is a fairly complicated formula, but after enough practice problems, you should be experts in this formula. All right, so if you're ready, you can go ahead to part C where the interest rate is 6%. All right.
Okay. 134686. Perfect. All right. So let's do the steps. P equals 1,000, N is 4, T is 5, and now this time R is 6 percent. Okay, so once again, nothing's changed except the rate of interest. Still quarterly, still five years. So we have 1,000 times 1.015 to the 20th power which down here you can see on your calculator as um, 1.015 exponent 20 equals times a thousand equals. And when you're done, you'll get 1346.86 after a little rounding. Okay, so if you've got that one, that's great. Move on to the next one in part D. The interest rate is 8%. All right, when we're done, I'll, I'll summarize all these on, the, on that one sheet on the or that one slide on the top so we can see side by side how they're all affected by this. Oh, here we go. So we've got 1485.45 because that's 8% for uh, five years. 1485.95, exactly. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. I have something slightly different. Um, let me just, let's go through that. Um, in this case, we should have P equals 1,000, 4, and 5. R is 8%. A equals P times 1 plus R over N and T. One thousand times one point oh two to the twentieth power. So if you do it uh, on your calculator as one point oh two exponent twenty equals times a thousand equals. Let me just double check mine. I have fourteen eighty five point ninety five. Is that what you said? Oh, you did. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Okay, I guess you made a typo. All right, this is good. 1485.95. All right, so um, let, let me start filling this thing in so you can see the difference uh, in each of these cases. This one was 1104. For part B, we got 12, 20, 19. For this one, we got 
134686. And then this uh, last one was 1485.95. And so you can see it, it now it makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a significant difference. And the longer we leave the money in the bank, the more of a difference it's going to make. All right, so now here's one thing we still haven't done yet. We change the compounding frequency, we change the interest. Let's create a series of examples where we change the time. All right, let's get rid of these. And I'm going to make a slight change to this thing. And then we can uh, get even more practice, but we're going to see the impact of time this time. So. Let's assume that the $1,000, let's keep the compounding quarterly. It's still $1,000, but this time, let's just say that the rate is always, um, uh, let's keep it at four. All right, it's being stubborn again. Hold on a second. There we go. So an investor deposits $1,000 in a bank that pays 4% compounded quarterly. Compute the future value based on the assumption that the time is, um, and then we'll do, let's say two years, four years, six years, and eight years. Okay, so this time it's time that's different. The uh, interest rate is the same. The compounding frequency is the same. It's always a thousand dollars. So we want to figure out the future value based on these four times. And again, we'll see how they compare with each other. All right. Now at this point, you're getting so good at this <laughs> um, that we don't need a ton of more practice. When this uh, example is over, what we need to consider then is we're going to take a step back and look clo more closely at where this rate of return is actually coming from. But right now, let's just do the calculations and see what we get. Oh, wow, that was fast. 10, 20, ooh, I have something different. Let's see, maybe I made a mistake here, hold on. Let me just double check my results. Oh, no, no, you got it, sorry. I made a typo in my calculator, you have it. It's, it is 1082.86, perfect. All right, so let's see why. Um, again, we'll just summarize the information we have on the top, just to, so we can see it as we go along. And so in these cases, P is a thousand. In each case, the rate is 4% and N is four. And part A, T equals two. A thousand times one plus 0.04 and N is four and then T is two. So in these cases, the only thing that's really changing is the exponent. All right, so in this calculator, you could put 1.01, 1 
exponent eight equals times a thousand equals, and you will in this case, if you raise 1.01 to the eighth power and then multiply it by a thousand, you do in fact get 1,082 point 86 after rounding it to dollars and cents perfect all right so if you got that one right why don't you move on to part b where your time will be four years Okay, 1170, ooh, um, that sounds pretty high. Why don't you try, oh no, actually that sounds kind of low. Um, all right, actually, let me double check my results. Uh, hold on, I may have made a typo. No, no, you got it, sorry, I did it again. I made a typo. It is 1172.58, you're absolutely correct. Very good. Let's see why. Yes, I know, because then you don't realize that you've made a typo until after it's too late. Uh, <laughs> that's right. My fingers are just too big for these keyboards, I'm telling you. Um, I'm just still not used to having my fingers run across these tiny little buttons. But um, I, you know, well, that's why we double check. I just uh, didn't double check and that's what I get. Okay, so anyways, let's see why. Yeah, typos in English, no problem. Um, it's so, you notice it right away, but here it's a problem. Okay, so this time we change the time to four years. Okay. One thousand. So um, again, we're keeping this part constant. What's changing is the t. So this time we have a thousand times one point oh one to the sixteenth power, which on your calculator is one point oh one exponent sixteen equals times a thousand equals. And so if you go through all those steps. You should have 1172.58 uh, yes, 58 when you round it to dollars and cents. Perfect. All right. Well, we're flying along now, and that's good. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, so this formerly scary looking formula is now becoming very comfortable, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, and the calculator itself is becoming more comfortable because we're going to keep needing it as we go along. So now for part C, let's change that to six years and see what happens.
All right, here we go. 1269.73, perfect. All right. So this is six years now. So let's see why this is happening. All right, so again, we'll put the constants on the top. R equals 4% and N is four. In part C, T is six. Okay, so this reduces to a thousand times 1.01. This time the exponent is 24. And again, on your calculator, you could do it as 1000 X to the Y 24 equals times 1000 equals, and that should give you 1264, sorry, 69.73 after rounding to dollars and cents. All right, there's only one more. Why don't you go ahead and try t equals eight? All right, let's see who has it. 1374.94, that's it. All right, so we'll do this one. And then um, sadly enough, that has to be the last example of the day. But I think that by now, um, you're pretty good at this formula. Anything that I throw at you, 
you should be able to handle it without any difficulty at all. All right. Now, there is another formula coming up later on in this chapter that's even messier than this one, but that's okay. We'll build up to that one too. Okay. So this one simplifies to a thousand times 1.01 to the 32nd power, which on your calculator you could do as 1000. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, what did I do? I think I made a mistake on the last one. I just noticed it. This is not a thousand. This is um, 1.01, sorry. Let me, I just noticed my mistake. This is 1.01. It's 1.01 that's getting raised to that exponent. Okay, so yeah, whoops. Yeah, it's 1.01. If you raise a thousand to that exponent, it'll be astronomical. 1.01 raised to the 32nd power times a thousand equals, and when you go through all the steps, you should have 13, 74, 94. So what I'm gonna do now is copy them into that chart. And I'd like you to notice how much of a difference the times make to these future values. So the first one was 1082, 86. The second one was 1172.58. In the third case, 1269.73. And the one we just did was 1374.94. So compared to the other two, remember we in each case we did the same thing. We went through, let's go back and revisit them for a second. Here, the only thing that's changing is the compounding frequency. Okay, and the numbers go up, although slowly. Uh, here, we changed the rate and they went up fairly quickly. And here, they went up because time was increasing. So. As far as the uh, return to earn an investment or having money in the bank, it appears that the biggest determinants of how much money you'll actually have are the rate of interest and the time. The compounding frequency is important too, but the longer you leave the money in the bank, the higher the rate of interest you earn, the more money you'll have. So one day when you sit down to start planning out your retirement, many, many decades down the road, this is exactly the kind of thing that you will be thinking about. So anyway, it's important to not only understand how to use the formula, but to see how the interest rate, the time and the compounding frequency all affect the amount of money we'll have in the bank. And of course, if you'd started out with $10,000, each of these numbers would be 10 times as large as it is now. So that also is of course a major uh, consideration. Now, what we're going to do though, is we're gonna take a, a closer look at these results next time and, and break it down into um, where these numbers are actually coming from. And uh, we'll see something interesting when we do that. And then we're going to dive into a consideration of the actual way in which interest rates are expressed. When you walk into the bank, for example, and you see what they've written on the wall for uh, the different interest rates, we're going to sit down and try to figure out what exactly they're telling us with those numbers. But anyway, so sadly enough, we have to stop right now. I know we had fun today, but it's all over. Uh, you know, <laughs> we can only do so much. So uh, I'll just see you all then again on Monday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome.